Coming up on this out of Don't Panic, we're going to talk about technology, specifically the Consumer Electronics Show, the biggest show in the year. And we're going to talk about everything that was there, the gadgets, the gimmicks, and everything in between. We've also got some non-CES news around Apple, Snapchat, and Microsoft, as well as our picks. It's a great episode of Don't Panic. I assume we haven't done it yet, but it's going to be great, and you should listen to it right now. This is Don't Panic, episode number 116. Recorded January 11th, 2016, on fancy fridges, fitness fanatics, and fun finds from the fair floor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, uh, the technology podcast that would never put a giant tablet in your fridge. I'm Sean Jennings, joined, as always, by the Mr. Freeze and Captain Cold of technology, Yep, our favorite supervillains. It's Colby Rabidou and Dan Miller. Gentlemen, Arr! Arr, that's right. <laughs> Finally getting a little cold this winter. Still uh, right. still no snow. Still no, uh, well, unless you live yeah, in, a little in, here. in Baston. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Well, there's always it's snow in Baston. It was, it was so in the snowy yard. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, no, that's that's pretty much what people talk like here. It's fine. I like it a lot, actually. The I, I, yeah. So the thing I realized recently is is I realized what exactly a Rhode Island accent is, and I I realized it's like just the A parts of the Boston accent. The like the the R things, I guess. Like the A R replacements, um, and none of the like weird O stuff, like, uh. Can you so, give us a demonstration? <laughs> Weird. No, well, well, well. So, so <laughs> I want to get schooled like, here. In in a Boston accent, you might say Boston, right? Like a Rhode Island pros- person just says Boston, but you still say things like "ka." Like you don't uh, say the "r" at the end of things. Uh, and it's a lot. Uh, Rhode Island's a lot of like dropping "r"s to like string words together and and adding them back in other places. So it's like. Like, that's how, why we have, uh, Rhode Island people say, like, idea, but you never say idea, like, on its own. It's like, I have an idea about, and it, it's just to, like, make it easier to say. So and how would you, how would you, what would you call a bar that, that is mostly about cars? A car bar? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. A, a, I'm thinking about it too much, so, like, right now, in, in, if I wasn't being silly, I would probably say car bar, um, but I don't know. But I don't know if you, you've ever noticed that, but I say, dr- I say draw, like, with no R for the cat, like, a draw that you put stuff in, and drawer for, like, drawing, which is completely the fucking opposite, backwards. yeah. Wait, you say drawing? Yeah, I do. Oh, I didn't know that. I heard yeah. that. Draw and it's the same thing. You put the R there to make the ing sound better. Like drawing sounds so dumb. <laughs> There's a piece missing in the middle, and it's the R. <laughs> this has been lesson one in speaking Colby. <laughs> so, like a Boston accent is all that stuff plus other stuff. Huh? Yeah. Well, this that's, I did not know. That's that's my opinion, anyways. Dan, any comment on uh, New York City? I'm, no, uh, I don't know that New York City has an accent. Long Island definitely has an accent, though. But New York City, I don't know. Like, I like I, there's like a Brooklyn accent, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Brooklyn's on Long Island. That's true. It's <laughs> part of New York City. It. It's very weird. Yeah. Uh, but I think that the Brooklyn and the Long Island are, are close relatives. And and the kinetic... I can... I think the Connecticut accent is the broadcasting accent. Not to sound like an asshole, <laughs> but like there, there is almost no, there. I don't pronounce anything that people don't understand. Like I don't say anything strange. I say strange things like tag sale, uh, which no one else more slang the than countries. anything well, else. That's not a slang. It's the the term for regional yard dialect. Sale. But only in Connecticut, as far as right. Do you guys say tag sale? I think I, I, know. Say, I, mean, I say tag sale. I'm a, I, I've always been aware of tag sale. Always been aware. That's right. We always tag sale's it number tags. one for me. But I think there are certain things like um, like bubbler crosses borders between Rhode Island and Mass. There are certain New England things that we we share 
across you border. Know, Boulder is is like Rhode Island and adjacent towns. I would also, I bet like towns like Putnam that are right on the border of Rhode Island and Connecticut also say bubbler. Mm-hmm. Um, that would surprise me. But there, it's also like Wisconsin or one of the one of the like North Midwest like Great Lakes states also says bubbler, uh, and I think that's weird and cool. Solidarity. I think it's a I think it's a, a great idea. That's what that's why I always say idea. I agree. There's always an extra R at the end. Um, I would I would try to to pick out what the Berkshire accent is, but um, I don't, you know. Howdy, y'all! You know, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know how we talk. Basically, sure accent. Basically, how Matt talks when we do D and D. Well, <laughs> hi there. It's plenty nice to meet you. You know, that's no, we don't know. I don't. You'll have to tell me. I'm from there, so if if I have an accent, I say wicked. Things are wicked awesome. Yeah. See, I realized I um I used to say wicked when I was a kid when I was in high school and stuff, and then like went to Marist and and just sort of, like, stopped saying it. And then in California, I didn't really say it. But I've made it, like, a conscious effort to start saying Wicked again since yeah. I moved back to the East Coast. And now yes. I do it. Do it again. It feels great. It's a good one. It's a good yeah. one. It's one you want to keep. Definitely. Now, how would you... I, I, there's a New York Times article from 2004 about the Connecticut accent. How would you folks pronounce... The town W O L C O T T. You spelled that way too fast. What was W O L C O T T? Walcott. Well, yeah. No, I'd say I'd say Woolcott, like W O O L, but Woolcott. Uh, it's which pronounced Woolcott. Woolcott. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I plausible. That. That's Massachusetts is the worst for that because like Worcester oh. is not Worcester. There's no like SHs in Worcester. It's, uh, and also Peabody oh. is spelled P body. Peabody. Doesn't make That's any sense. BS. That's almost. So, here, here's here's my here's my rationalization for Peabody. Right. Um, I don't know <laughs> if this is true at all. This is total bullshit. So the town. The, take for example the town I grew up in. I grew up in Burrillville. And Burrowville was, like, named after a guy named James Burrow. And and he, like, they named a town after him, so it was Burrowville. So my argument for Peabody is that it was named after a guy named named something Peebo, and they added the D to the end. <laughs> so Peabody is correct because it's his name with D, not P-E-A space body. Like, I so I hope know. that's true. <laughs> I so, I pray that is true. <laughs> Otherwise, if that's not the Peebo. case, it's completely Thomas weird. J. Peebo founded <laughs> Peabody. We shouldn't look it up just so that. Oh, yes. I already, I already looked it up. <laughs> Am I right? I won't say no. <laughs> Bummer. It was changed to Peabody in April 30th, 1868, but was originally called Northfields. Oh. And it was founded yeah. in 1626. Wow, this was a real, a real New England. Yeah, uh, we've really gone off the rails this time. I think it's cool keep saying that we like you like our rant BS in the beginning. I don't know if anyone else does. <laughs> I do. I think it's interesting. Um, my favorite uh, when you look up a town on Wikipedia, they list the uh, the the notable people from that town, yep. and depending uh, for many like colleges, states. Many different Wikipedia articles have this feature, but the the more specific you get, the less likely it is that you will have heard of most colleges. You'll have heard of some. I'm like, oh yeah, so oh yeah, he's from uh, whatever. Uh, I, I cannot say that for Peabody, Massachusetts. No notables. No one that I've heard of. Uh, you've got. Uh, Jeff Allison, former professional baseball pitcher for the Florida Marlins from 2003 to 2011. Hey, of course. An Olympic championship swimmer. Uh, John Proctor of Salem Witch Hysteria Victim. The guy, that's the guy from The Crucible. Did you ever read The Crucible? Yeah, I read The Crucible. Yeah. Wow. Actually, so I have someone on this list then. Look at that. 
I think I'm. I think the Massachusetts uh, tourism board should start sending us checks at this point. Right. We're doing their job for them. I mean, what's better than the greatest state in the union, Massachusetts? You got the, the <laughs> pictures. You got Baston. You got all the kind of garbage in between. <laughs> Springfield. That, that you uh, drive through on garbage. the bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got you got the ocean. You got the cape. You got. I mean, it's really it's kind of the perfect state. Let's be honest. It's the hat to Connecticut and Rhode Island, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it's the it's What's the it? it's the the oh, who was that guy with the 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 coonskin cap? Oh, uh, I was afraid you were gonna go with Billy Ray Cyrus and the mullet. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> oh boy, I'm sorry. We 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 go in such different circles. It's fun. <laughs> Davy Crockett. Yes. Yeah, Davey that's Crockett what I said. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You... I miss. I apologize. That's okay. Oh my. Lord. I mean, I think in general, New England is pretty great. I agree. Not like those schmucks in New York. No. The tri-state area. Ooh. Fucking oh. two-time oh. in Connecticut. Oh. Can't be part of two regions. <laughs> it's not a thing. True. That's, that's See, messed up. I it's think, so, yeah. Well, to love New York and New Jersey is, like, if, if we could just cut New Jersey out and it was just New York and Connecticut, then you might as well call it part of New England at that point. See, I always assumed that the tri-state area was New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania because it. I I just assumed like Connecticut is already a part of New England and it couldn't be a part of both. Yeah, it but, makes me so mad. But you know what though, <laughs> I will I will give that to Connecticut if Rhode Island can call itself an island. <laughs> That's you know what if I know if I you're know. gonna do that. Hey then... man, I've I've told you my rationalization for how Rhode Island is was called Rhode Island I, too. Yes. I haven't heard this. I hope it's so, as good as your Peabody one. <laughs> it's it's probably as good and equally completely false. Um, but the so Rhode Island, the full name of Rhode Island. Fun fact: Rhode Island is the smallest state with the longest name. Uh, the full name is the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, right? So my my argument: there are several islands that make up Rhode Island. Like Newport is on Aquidneck Island. Um, so my, my rationalization is that, that Rhode Island started on one of the islands. So like the Rhode Island was actually an island and then <laughs> Providence is not on an island. Providence on the mainland. So that was the Providence plantation. So I'd buy that. If my history teacher yeah. told me that I'd buy it. So that's <laughs> much better than James Peebo. <laughs> okay. Well, there is a whole section of the Wikipedia article on the origin of the name of Rhode Island. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> this is going to go either really well or really terribly for you. Uh, uh, the official name of the state is the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, she said, which is derived from the merger of two colonies. Rhode Island Colony was founded on what is now commonly called Aquidneck Island. Yeah! Yeah! Mm. Nice! Boy! And include the settlements with Newport and Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Portsmouth? Portsmouth. Yeah, there's another one. Portsmouth. Ports, really? Yes. I yes. said it right the first time? Yes. Oh, it is not spelled that way, no. though. No, it's it's spelled <laughs> Ports Mouth. I'm glad I said it correctly the first time, though. Yeah. But, Dan, you're you from know? Connecticut. You pronounce everything correctly. I, I didn't say that. I just, no one has presented with me, like, Dan, you say Blank. this, like, weird. Yeah. And I think that the reason no one has said that to me, despite I've met people from all over the world who speak English, is because that uh, my theory is that the newscast, NBC, ten, like uh, the whatever you call it, Brian Williams speaks with a Connecticut accent when he yeah, does. He's probably news. very true. good at it. I mean, I feel like it might be a, a consequence of Connecticut being such a two-timer. Like, they're, they're, they're no, they don't have really any identity of their own. They're just like, Ooh. oh, well, just some of that, some Massachusetts of that. throwing shots at Connecticut. <laughs> Ooh. We're going to have a tri-state war here pretty soon. But, but then remember, there's the whole rest of the country. That yeah. You know, no, there funny, isn't. Funny accents between here, California, and Texas. I mean, I feel like California is pretty neutral, too, as far yeah, as true. accents go. I mean, they have some weird vocabulary, but the I accent is non-existent. But I, most of the people I've met from California have been from L.A. or San Francisco, so or at least those areas. I haven't met anyone yeah. from like a really weird part of California. No, it, as, neither have I. 
And I think that those places, uh, the very cosmopolitan, in air quotes, in scare quotes, cities in the United States do tend to, I think, do tend to speak more, more neutrally on the whole because so many people move there from other places. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I feel like I've learned so much. I was, I was just going to say, so educational. This is... N- this- now, now, Colby, I didn't know that in, in 2009, your state had to hold a referendum on whether to keep the plantation in the official name of Rhode Island. I do vaguely remember that, yes. <laughs> that was probably slight... Well, no, I probably could have voted in that election. 2009, I was... You would like have been a freshman. 18, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I did. <laughs> But luckily, nothing <laughs> bad happened. <laughs> Man, that's that's like the that's the only thing we learned in elementary school is like Rhode Island is the smallest state with the longest name, and the name is the state of Rhode Island's Providence Plantation. <laughs> the other thing, I was playing a trivia game with some people last weekend, and one of the questions was what's the most densely populated state in America? And I knew the answer to that, too, because Rhode Island is the second most densely populated state <laughs> in the United States. The first is New Jersey. Yes. Wow. Absolutely true. Yeah, I killed it for, like, two rounds. It was great. <laughs> well, Speaking of uh, trivia, I saw... I finally got my PlayStation 4 fix. I don't know if we talked about that on the show. And I saw that there is a... We we talked about the Jackbox Party Pack mm. on the show. There's a Jackbox Party Pack 2 on oh, the really? PlayStation Store. Yeah, really. Did you play I, it? I have not downloaded it or mm. played it, no. But just so everyone knows, that is a thing that exists. Fun. All right, so that was a nice show, guys. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the, the good news is just by listening to the first uh, 17 minutes of this show, you get three college credits. <laughs> it's that informational. Just submit the paperwork to uh, don'tpanic.edu. Um, <laughs> so um, let's do technology. I think that's why we're here. Um, I know our one live listener on Mixler right now is going to want to hear us do that. So um, that, that's why they, that's why they show up in, in in droves. Says the one guy listening. Um, so we've got CES, right? So we last week we teased pre CES. Consumer Electronics Show, Gadget Palooza. Um, did you guys get a chance to to follow any of the the news coming out of CES? It comes fast and heavy. I did. I I, I for the first two days, I one hundred percented the Verge's like day wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, I was like, I can't even bring myself to <laughs> Just open. Give my... up at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so I much. I... I skimmed and I I clicked on the things that I that I thought were interesting. So yeah. I don't think I've been following very very much well and i don't think that's surprising considering the amount of news that comes out of ces so in past years if you remember gentlemen um this is now the third or fourth c a third ces we've talked about on the show maybe four i don't know um i usually fill the document with like a hundred links to every product announced i didn't do that this year because um i honestly didn't think it was that exciting of a ces to be honest i didn't think there were that many breakout items individual items more themes. So I want to give you guys the chance, if there's anything you recall off the top of your head that stood out to you as, wow, that was neat, or wow, that was cool, and I can give you a minute to think if you want me to go first, but um, let, let's freeform this. What, what what grabbed your attention at CES this year? Uh, I like the, the USB-C cable, like the MagSafe USB-C cable. Yes. I would yes. totally buy one of those, because I, I, I have that tiny, tiny, tiny mag. Uh, it's always attached. Uh, I got excited and then very not excited about those, the Oculus. Mm. Let's talk about both of those. You're referring to uh, Grip, call it their break. Um, oh, yeah, you have a tiny MacBook. This is relevant to your life. It yep. is. The one <laughs> USB-C. That's the only reason thing. I was excited. A lot of USB-C at the show, actually. A lot of monitors and tablets and, and phones and a lot of things um, using USB-C. I don't know when you'll be able to buy them, but at least they're there. Uh, Griffin announced their break-safe adapter, and it's literally a little in-between that you leave one end plugged into the USB-C on your computer, and then you attach it with the magnets 
um, as that breakaway, so it's not built into the computer, but you still have the breakaway in the cable. Um, it is a six-foot cable, and uh, it will be available in April for the reasonable price of thirty nine ninety nine. <laughs> it's pretty unreasonable, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, for a, a fancy USB-C cable, Apple, would, would Apple you buy it for that? I mean, I probably would just for the utility, but I don't think most people would. I, I don't know. I, I would think twice about it, frankly. Now, now, Colby, do you still use your tiny MacBook a lot, or was it only is it only really a traveling thing? If you're at home... No, I use it at home. I, okay. It's much more comfortable over my... My your, 15, your Godzilla 15. MacBook? Yeah, it's it's much too large. Mm -hmm. Usually, lately, what I've been doing... So, for New Year's, I had to move my computer, so I put that my put my Mac Mini under the TV, and, like, right now, I'm doing the pot, the show off the, the big MacBook, and I just leave that one plugged into the screen. Yeah. And then I, everything else I use my tiny MacBook for. So, the, the Mac Mini is still under the TV? Yes, it is. I just set up, I turned on SSH so I can just SSH into it. <laughs> nice. like the cool Sean's kids. like, yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> Nerds, yeah. <laughs> Computers, sure. Yep. All right. I was, uh, who was I talking with? I was talking with a family member. I can't remember which. I was talking with a family member and they, I tell them stories about you guys and New Year's, we were hanging out and stuff and they're, oh, how are they, how's Colby doing? How's the, you know, how are things at work for them? And they're like, Sean, don't they do the same kind of thing you do? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, these guys like do real work. Like they do important stuff. Like don't be confused. Well. Let's, let's, let's distinguish those two things. Real and important are not necessarily the same thing. Dan, listen. I without, accept that I do one of those two things. Dan, without you, there would be a <laughs> lot of hand-knit scarves that wouldn't be sold. So think of all of the, the necks you've warmed over the, uh, <laughs> over the years. It gets me about the work that we do is, like, <laughs> any number of, like, Major but believable events could happen and probably, like, make everything we've yes. worked almost our entire lives for completely irrelevant. I, like, I just said this the like, other day. But my One of my coworkers was jokingly like, what do you even work on? And I'm like, I have no proof I do anything. <laughs> like, if this computer, like, were to, like, fall in a toilet, there would literally be no proof I work here. Like, <laughs> right. it's kind of disturbing in a way. Yeah, like, I don't know, if we just ran out of coal tomorrow and couldn't make power anymore, this is not relevant anymore. I have don't no panic. skills. Don't panic. No one would ever see Don't Panic again. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, <laughs> we, we have no real skills. It's terrible. We should just start reproducing, reproducing Don't Panic on CD. On or vinyl? Or something, <laughs> yes. On Laserdisc? Don't Panic on Laserdisc? <laughs> yeah. no, I like vinyl because you can play that, like, by like, hand. By hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. We'll live forever. I'll I'll, inv I'll look into what it would cost to get a vinyl press. Maybe someday they'll put us on a on a space probe like the Voyager. Yeah, golden the record. Sound, to sounds space. of Earth version two. Yeah, <laughs> volume two. <laughs> that's what I meant. Now that's why I call Earth twenty seven. Feature, feature, <laughs> don't panic. Oh boy, it's good uh, to know we're the bellwether of the human race. <laughs> It's not terrifying at all. Um, Dan, you mentioned the Oculus Rift. We got some information on that, like when you can buy it and for how much. How about March 28th and $599? Shit. You consider that bad news? I mean, yeah. It's not, I mean, here, uh, this, the, the thing that really made me angry was that they had that big announcement last weekend to tell us that we wouldn't even know how much it would cost until we had the page open to pre-order it. That's ridiculous. Like, why Why were they so afraid to mention the cost? A, it's because they're going back on their... I forgot their promise was. It was like $400 or less was their promise. Like, like oh, yeah, we, we, you know, someone just said this off the cuff, and they shouldn't have said it. And people should know that this stuff is subject to change. But they still said it, so they were probably nervous to go back on that. But think about how bad it looks for you to be like, oh, yeah, just, yeah, pre-orders open on Wednesday. How much does it cost? Oh, we uh, we can't tell you yet. 
that you'll have to find out uh, Wednesday morning. So yeah, I will not be getting an Oculus Rift. A because I don't have anything that can actually run it <laughs> from. Uh, B because six hundred, three hundred, three hundred, three fifty. I would consider four hundred if I had a computer that could run it. Uh, but but six hundred. Too much. I, I could I could buy a computer that could run it for six hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, though, it is like an infinitely sized TV. So maybe it's a, the only it's a, you can watch. Like it's not it's not that's just true. better than a TV in every way. The only enough. you can watch it has almost no content or entertainment available for it. <laughs> oh, it's got enough. You can get Netflix. Is that or is that only on Samsung? I no, can't I remember. Know. But, Dan, you don't want to sit in your apartment with your Oculus Rift on watching a, a Netflix? Oh, no, I would. <laughs> you just don't want to spend, you know... I just don't want to spend $600 on Plus that. a computer, yeah. Yeah, I'll wait until next year. Maybe they'll drop the price, or it, it turns out that it's really, really awesome. And there's great games that the gameplay's really compelling, it's a lot of fun. Or movies, I know we've talked about movies. I think that's much, much further off, but that's... That's the real game for me is when we get movies on it and it's not you're not watching a movie that takes up your whole head you're doing a virtual reality entertainment experience thing that's going to be great. Yep. Get me that. You can be the pioneer for that, Dan. $400. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, next year if it's if it's $500 next year and there's a couple of games that have really good reviews and a one other thing you can do is I'll. I'm quickly. Could for or an Xbox like theoretically run, run an Oculus Rift, or is uh, I don't really know, but I suspect like could it theoretically run an Oculus Rift? I don't think so because those consoles are only designed to do. 1920 by 1080 resolution, and those headsets have far more pixels. Gotcha. Uh, it's at least like I, I don't know. Uh, I would imagine it, it's like running two 720p displays simultaneously, at least. Right. So I don't know. I, I know that that PlayStation is making their own virtual yep. reality headset that obviously works. Yep. Well, and there's, you know, for 600 bucks, you can buy, you know, Samsung VR and a used Samsung phone, and, you know, it's not the same, but, you know, it's different levels, and I just, I double-checked. They haven't announced the price, but the HTC Vive, which is their version that they've been working on, um, it, pre-orders open in February. They haven't announced a price yet, um, so it'll be curious to see how close they get. Yeah, the Oculus Rift... It- at least the V2 dev kit was 1080p per eye. So, or no, 1080 by 1200. I don't think that's 1080p. But no, I don't think so. Because yeah. 1080p is 1080 by like 1920 or something, right? I think it's 1920 by 10 by 1080. Yeah, 1920 by 1080. So, mm-hmm. but more than. 720, which is 1336 by 768, which doesn't make any sense at all. How the hell did they wind up with the the number 720 to represent that resolution? At least the 1080p dimensions has at least the number 1080 in it somewhere. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, Dan. Yeah. It's okay. You deserve better. Once we're all on 4K. Has anyone ever watched... Has anyone here watched a movie on 4K? I haven't watched a movie on 4K. Are movie theaters in 4K? Yes. They are. Just well, universally? Like some yeah, of- yeah, that's the question. Is it all or some? I know... I know the latest Sony digital projectors, which are in a lot of theaters, are 4K. But I don't think it's all... If your theater's been renovated, probably within the last year, you're probably watching at 4K. You know, if 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 it's got. So I probably saw I I went to a newly renovated theater and I saw Star Wars. I probably saw it in 4K. Probably. Yeah, are really movies cool. being shipped in 4K? Do you know, like to the theaters? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I don't remember. I don't remember being blown. I don't remember going to a theater. I've gone to like a couple 
two movies a year for regularly for the past three or four years. And I don't remember suddenly being like, oh my god, this is so much better. This yeah, movie. I I think as far as I've been, as I've read, as I understand it, you're not, it's kind of like megapixels in your phone, right? Where, yeah, yeah you can start adding them, but at some point you're going to hit a ceiling where it's the other technologies that are going to make the difference. And I think projection is the same way, where you can keep adding Ks, but then you have to start looking into, like, laser projection and um, better, like, bulb and, and light technologies and better screens, and there's other ways you can improve it. Yeah, I will say I saw a super high-resolution planetarium. Did I talk about that on the show? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe. Newly renovated, just opened this, uh, well, late, late last year. Uh, that, that was incredible. That just... I immediately knew that this was technology I'd never seen before. There, there was so much detail and so much happening in this massive mm -hmm. screen ahead of me. That was cool, and I haven't I haven't had that since I saw my first uh, 1080p display. Mm. The, the 4K ones in the store they look cool, but if I've been watching my last, if I watched Mad Max and Star Wars in 4K, I did not notice at all. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Well, and I will say, get excited because uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 will be the first movie ever shot in 8K. <laughs> so get psyched for that. I don't know where you'll watch it in 8K, but it will be in 8K. Uh, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, Netflix in 2025 can start streaming <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy in, uh, in 8K to their one 8K uh, uh, subscriber. Yeah, on their super duper ultra premium high def TV. Right. <laughs> um, Twenty five. Yeah. All You're right. Like Forty. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. The the one thing I pulled one story I thought was interesting, and that was the. Uh, it's a car, which is weird. This show cars were like half the show this year. I Cars were big last year, too. I right, and even bigger this year, which is odd because, like, a week after CES right now is the North American International Auto Show, the biggest auto show in, you know, North America. So, right. you know, stealing some of the thunder, we saw, ev I swear, you know, uh, 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 General Mills and Kellogg's announced a self-driving car. I mean, literally <laughs> everybody announced some <laughs> kind of self -driving. Either they're making the computer chips for it, they're making the cars, they're making the software, they're making the cameras. Everybody's involved in self-driving cars. It was kind of annoying how much they talked about it. But I want to talk about self-driving cars. I want to talk about the GM, the Chevrolet Bolt, which is the first um, fully electric car at an affordable price. So you love your Tesla. People are psyched about Tesla. That's great. I'm never going to buy one because I'm not a gazillionaire. Unless my Powerball numbers come through, I'm not buying a Tesla. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll just buy Tesla if I win. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but the Bolt is going to be around $30,000 after tax incentives and not much more than that without it. Um, electric range of over 200 miles, but I actually think it's kind of a good looking car. Um, to be honest, they, they rolled yeah. out what it actually looks like. I mean, it's a little, I mean, it looks pretty compact, right? But it yeah. looks like, uh, it looks a lot like Jill has a Honda fit. Yeah. It looks a lot like that sort of car. Like, super practical for the city, which is probably the kind of place where it makes sense to have an electric car anyways. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I, I just think it's exciting that finally a an electric car that isn't either really expensive or really ugly and, you know, too futuristic for its own good. Like, mm. all I want is a fully electric car that I could buy that is kind of like a regular car but cooler. And I feel like that's kind of what this is. So I'm uh, I'm actually kind of excited for it. I'm not a big car guy, but I like... I, so I was going to ask that because Colby and I, we don't have cars. We can't even get excited about this stuff. But I was curious how you felt you use a car every yep. day. Yep. Uh, it is an infinitely larger part of your life than it is ours. Do you feel that this focus on cars as consumer electronics is justified? Are you excited about any of these things? I I actually do. I get excited about 
consumer electronics and cars, but usually it's, oh, you can plug your iPhone in and serial <laughs> work, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm yeah. traditionally not excited about the cars themselves or the, the sort of driving technology. I'm not particularly excited about self-driving cars. I think we're farther away than people think. Um, but I do like the idea of electric and of these concept cars. And, and you know, to contrast this, I don't know if you guys saw the Faraday Future announcement. Yeah. So Faraday Future is this, like, ultra-secretive Silicon Valley car startup that's backed by, like, a gazillion dollars from China billionaires. Um, <laughs> and they, they're, like... They're annoyingly secretive about it um, to the point where it's like it's downright annoying. So they're like, oh, we're going to announce this big thing at CES. Oh, my God. It's going to change the world. And they get up and they do those like every you ever watch a movie and they like mock the Steve Jobs announcement where it's way over the top. It was kind of like that. Yeah. What was what was that? uh, The alien uh, prequel. What was it? Prometheus. Oh, they did. Oh, that's right. I saw where it was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. TED Talk. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of like that. It was over the top. And of course, they unveiled this ridiculous looking, completely impractical, way overpriced F- Formula One looking sports car BS. And they're like, <laughs> oh, look, it's cool and it's shiny. And we're going to make it in three years from now for a, a m- amount of money we won't tell you because it's really expensive. And I was like, that's cool, but that means nothing to me. Yeah. And then I look at GM and I'm like, you're, you're, you're taking the future technology we're promised and you're giving it to average people at a price they can afford. That is what excites me about technology. Um, yeah. And when you do it in a car, it's really hard in a car because it takes so long to do. Now, uh, independent, though, of driving technologies in electric or not, is, does the, the concept of having a smart car excite you, a car that can park itself that has uh, more awareness, more built-in features, a car, a car that gets OS updates? I, I, want a, I want a car that makes driving easier for me. For example, like, one of the features I absolutely want to have on my next car is, like, the, um, and I don't know how widespread it is now, but where it radar locks onto the car in front of you in traffic and starts, uh, accelerates and slows based on the car in front of you. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> and it's cool. It's, it's designed for, like, cruise control highway driving. Yeah. But you know how you put on cruise control for a few miles and then you have to slow down or speed <laughs> I up. I think I I've counted I can count yeah. on on if I lost like if I, if I was a, a a woodworker and I sawed off a finger or two I could still count on one hand how many times I've ever used cruise control. Oh, you city dweller. You don't you don't get to use cruise control in <laughs> I Manhattan. Used cruise control I think when I was driving to Vermont once, and I think I used it when I drove uh, out to Pennsylvania a couple times. But I did that a lot. I drove out to Pennsylvania dozens of times, and most of the time I did not even think. It didn't even occur to me to use uh, cruise control. Because it's not really practical. Like, it is really old-fashioned. You just set a, 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 a speed, and your car just accelerates to that speed and doesn't go any faster there's there's so, nothing to it so the thing i always found terrifying about cruise control i've actually i i don't think i've ever used it maybe once just to try it mm-hmm. uh but i've been in the car with people who are using it and like you know it's all well and good like there's no traffic you're on it like an empty highway whatever the thing that gets me though is that it 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 while it won't accelerate past this, it, the car won't accelerate itself past a certain speed. Mm-hmm. If you're going down a hill or something, there's nothing stopping you going down a hill. Literally terrifying. Mm-hmm. So it's like you'll go arbitrarily fast. And then, like, the if you touch the brakes, it takes the cruise control off. So, like, people will try and go down hills without braking at all and end up going, like, 95 miles an hour at the bottom of the hill. Uh, I don't. I don't care for that. I don't think it makes people drive well. I'm <laughs> no. not interested. I'm not interested in any like self-driving features until like the car just drives itself. Like I don't think there's. I don't think any middle ground there is a good thing because I think it'll make people worse at driving than they already are. Uh, I am. <laughs> I am interested. That's in a my, very Massachusetts response right there. <laughs> yeah. Actorial <laughs> combat of driving. <laughs> No, it, it really is. It's terrifying here. Um, I mean, 
in Massachusetts, if you don't take what you feel you deserve, you won't get anything. <laughs> That's true. That's our state motto. <laughs> Massachusetts, I mean, we pay the iron price. <laughs> you bet. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like it exactly, but that, that was a Game I, of Thrones joke, Sean. You don't get it because you haven't won. What, what, what is this uh, throne game that you that you're talking about? I don't. So I, I was gonna say though to get like a little back on track. Uh, I was going to say, I, I do like the, like, emergency fail-safe things, like, you know, the the, the, the auto-braking that, like, if you're going to hit hit the yep. car in front of you, it'll stop the car. Like, you know, obviously you should still pay attention, but, uh, you know, if the car can, like, save your ass. The now, car now what about the safe. Tesla? It'll drive on the highway for you 100%. No intervention needed by I don't you. want that, though. I want to I wanna turn the wheel. The, the The speed thing is just kind of a convenience thing. It's not really about being able to completely let go. You want to... You, oh, you know, like, they show these concept cars where it's like, oh, all the people in the back hanging out, playing cards, having drinks while the car drives. Like, no. No. I'm not doing that. Like, I want my foot near the breaker gas. Sure. So when cruise control goes a little too fast, I can... You know, oh, I, I want to be involved. Yeah, but uh, so if the car was proven to be able to drive itself on the highway, you just get on the highway, press a button, let go of the gas, take your hand off the wheel, and it and it goes. You're still sitting in the driver's seat. You can still at any point take over, but you don't have to. You wouldn't use it at all. Honestly, though, that just sounds boring. Like well, at least when you're driving, you're doing something. Like what am I gonna do? Just sit there and just be like. I could play Hearthstone. <laughs> With my phone in front of the, the... Absolutely. Oh, I don't know, Dan. I don't. I, I just have... I am like millions of Americans that have a weird fear of self-driving cars. So for now, I will stick with the car. Like, Tesla announced... I wonder, uh, I wonder if, like, 50, 20 years from now, we'll, we'll, we'll start to look at people who like to drive themselves as, as some people are starting to look at gun owners. Like, anachronistic... Uh, like American, we'll be, we'll be the horse and buggy drivers. Right, right. Like, uh, way, <laughs> to, way more dangerous than than justifies the, the 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 freedom. So, did you did you ever see the 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 iRobot movie? Yes, and so, I read the book. Yeah, so so there is like in the movie. I don't know. I I didn't read the book. I've read other uh, books by that guy, but I haven't read iRobot. Um, but in the movie, there's there's a real like uh, Will Smith character is like that guy. Like cars drive themselves, and he always, he's always like taking it off autopilot, and there's like warnings. Uh, and then he has like a 20th century motorcycle that runs on gasoline, and he gets off, he's on the motorcycle with like the one of the other characters, and 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 the the other person is like. Does this thing run on gasoline? And he's like, "Yeah, why?" And 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 she's like, "Gasoline explodes! Like it's <laughs> totally insane." I'm just happy you yeah. compared me to Will Smith, so uh, <laughs> that's what I'm going to take from that. Um, just so the iRobot movie is is a movie adaptation of just one of the stories in iRobot, and the iRobot book. Uh, spreads the gamut from the very first semi-intelligent robot we ever made to the logical conclusion of there being robots and mm. and the stories that, that happen in between. It's really, 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 really good. Yeah. Maybe, would you recommend I, iRobot? I definitely want to read it at some point. I just haven't gotten there yet. It's a good one. Nice. Uh, all right, well, I would... If if I had to buy a car, and I do not plan on buying a car until the car can 100% drive me to wherever it is I'm going, no matter where it is. Well, they have that dance called Uber, and you yeah, don't even I, have to buy I, it. I no, I can't hail an Uber and be like, hey, could you go ahead and bring me to Columbus, Ohio, because I'm going there this weekend. Could. What, could you? I don't know, Dan. That sounds like the Dan Miller <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Just go into an Uber and be like, I take me to know Ohio. I who lives in Columbus, Ohio, and I have been telling them that I would visit, so be careful what you wish for, Sean. I'm sure so that... We're all going to split the bill, though, right? 
I don't know about that. I've already I've already blown my money on my uh, Volt well, Freewheel. Yeah, no, we'll just we'll use the show funds that pay for it, right? That's oh, fun. our negative dollars. Yes, <laughs> that's our, how the United States pays for things. That, <laughs> we can start a Kickstarter. Are you suggesting the show have a deficit, a national deficit? <laughs> yeah, we we borrow we money to pay for it. For it. So yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just terrible. sell our debt to China. <laughs> and credit default swaps will will crash the podcast economy. <laughs> oh boy, we are so all over the place. Yeah, yeah it'll only be a nine-hour Uber drive. It's fine. I, I think I, I think you should do it. That sounds really <laughs> expensive. Um, well, let, let's continue on. Um, it, it's up to you guys. We got time for a little more news. We can either do Battle of the Smart Fridges or we can do some non-CES news, and that's up to you guys. We've got stuff from Apple, Snapchat, Microsoft, Snapple. Um, <laughs> Snapple? <laughs> Man. Snapple chat? Snapple chat. <laughs> uh, I, I think the refrigerator thing is fun. I didn't look at what, what nonsense. Well, we've got two. Stuff. We've got two big fridges. We teased one last week. We'll talk about the first one. LG. Life's good. You may know them as the <laughs> Korean uh, appliance manufacturer. Well, they have a new fridge, and every year they have to put some new gimmick in it. Well... This year's gimmick, how about this? The door opens for you. So two big features. One, the door itself, it has a knock-on feature. So it's got, it's got like a clear window in the front. And when you knock on the door, the interior lights light up so you can see what's in the fridge without having to open it. Stay with me here. The Sorry. second feature is what they call auto door. Um... And it allows the fridge to detect when your foot is nearby. What? Oh, no! <laughs> 1300 to $1,700. I appreciate that they give you the estimate. Yeah. Like, that's... Mean, what, do you, what do you think an Uber driver would do if you got in the car and was like, I'm going to Dallas? Well, I would do it if I, I were an Uber driver. Their estimate in, so they would, they would know, yeah. at least at the point that I got in the car. I wonder how much more expensive it is. Oh, this is how much more expensive it is to do Uber Black. Ooh, three, gr- uh, three grand. Hey, man. <laughs> Riding in dude, style. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do it. You might as well do it all the way. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fantastic. I'm, wait, hang on. I'm, is there an Uber pool? Ah, not available. <laughs> Why am I not so... I can't carpool to Columbus, Ohio. Hey, someday. You never know. <laughs> Just gra- grab the nearest self-driving car, a few friends, and you're on your way. Exactly. That's where the self-driving car comes comes in in handy Definitely. is when you don't you're not you're not taking someone out of their way to go to Columbus, Ohio. It's just going to Columbus, Ohio. And now that self-driving car is in Columbus, Ohio. What was it? Te- uh, Tesla announced that in two or three years they expect to be able to because right now you can call your Tesla and it will actually like drive up to you in a parking lot or like back out of your garage. But they're saying in a couple years you'll be able to call it from across the country. <laughs> and it will drive itself to you. I do that, like that. That's very, like, Batman. Like if you accidentally James left Bond. your car in New York while you're in Los Angeles or something? <laughs> hey, people get on a plane drunk, I'm just saying. It, and it how, does it even, how does it even recharge? Maybe it uses that, like, weird snake charger we saw them, and it drives itself into the Tesla and just plugs itself in. Oh, my God! This is terrible. Yeah. So terrible. The future is going to be weird. Yes, exactly. And we'll be here... To chat about it. Every <laughs> um, just to finish on LG, um, auto door, you put your foot underneath it, and the fridge door opens itself, kind of like the hatchbacks on uh, SUVs that do that. You know, if you, Dan, you ever walk up to your fridge with your hands just full of things that need to be refrigerated? No. Yes, oh. and I put them down, I open up the door, it stays open, and I place the shit in the refrigerator. Yeah, but Dan, now we have auto door. You don't have to do it. LG has come to the rescue. It's not. No, I'm not excited about that. They, Let's uh, get to the camera. My thing. favorite thing about this story was how like dry the keynote was. Like the guy was staying, saying like Steve Jobs words, like incredible, but it was just so dry. And there were like these noticeable pauses between like him saying something and speaking applause. of of really dissonant videos along the same lines right so they're clearly trying to imitate a certain style but the content of the presentation just does not match up donald trump's first tv ad is oh my god yeah is 
is is dissonance to the max. Because all they 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 just took things that he actually said, had one of those dramatic announcer guys say them, and then it then it sounds even more ridiculous than if Donald Trump had said it. <laughs> but it's in the context of a serious political ad. I saw so Donald I saw Trump's the first... build a wall between us and Mexico and make Mexico pay for it. Make America great again. It's like wow. <laughs> That's, I saw that ad immediately followed by a Bernie Sanders ad, and it was the most bizarre. I'm sure you like, were jarred. It's like whiplash. <laughs> it was it was the the most bizarre juxtaposition of two two pieces of video that I've ever seen in my entire life. Right, and yeah, for for Bernie Sanders, is it just his? It's his uh, his folk album playing over him, like in a flannel shirt, chopping some wood in the backyard or something. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a you little know, more. Did he released an album, Bernie oh. Sanders? I didn't album. know that. I believe it. <laughs> and not recently either. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> I'll let you. Um. So, well, we'll 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 talk about Samsung's fridge here. We teased it last week. How about a twenty-one point five inch Tizen tablet built in? Um. It does oh, all. Boy. Yeah. It does all. Dan, you can get your calendar and your. Your your contact. Does it have a web browser? It has a web browser. You can play music with a built in speaker. Oh oh. It can mirror whatever's playing on your Samsung smart TV. Get that synergy going. Right. And it has three cameras inside that can take a, an image every time the door closes, and you can check those images from your Android or iOS device. Here we go. I just had a use case for this the other day where I wondered if I had lemons. And I didn't know if I did or not. And you want to check before you go home. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. That so is actually went, useful. Oh, and it turned out I did have lemons. But I was part of me was like, I could just buy lemons. I'm not going to break the bank. <laughs> You're not going to buy a super expensive <laughs> brand new refrigerator for that feature? N- no. Especially because I'm, 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 uh, I don't think that I could actually... I don't think it's possible to remove my refrigerator from my apartment. I... <laughs> I think it is sealed into the kitchen. It's, at it's a permanent addition. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not uh, going anywhere. The, did you say how what the price tag for this is? No. So they didn't announce on this or the LG. The, the they will be available later this year. These devices tend to be fifteen hundred plus. Gotcha. You know. How much is ref- I've never bought a refrigerator. How you can get is one ref- for his like at bargain basement like five hundred. Okay. You want to spend close to a thousand to get a decent right. one. So it's it's high. It's very high end. You know, it's, Colby, take that money and put it towards your Hobart washing machine. Yes. You're going to put right on that island. You Although have. you can't get a Tizen tablet in that. So no. How else you, you, don't, you don't just need it. It's very side. I'll just put my magnetic <laughs> iPad on it. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I already have a, I already have you a do. tablet. You have a smart fridge. You already have a smart refrigerator. Colby, yeah. you should build yeah. this. Like, you think you just you get... could put cam- like a GoPro yeah. in there and... A GoPro, yes. <laughs> I think this is good, like a speaker. Can yeah, you, actually, oh. this this is probably very achievable. Can Honestly, you, possibly achievable with things I already have in my house. Can you periscope your refrigerator for just live stream it continuously? Yes, <laughs> I would watch that. <laughs> like, what's in Colby's fridge today? I will look into it. The next thing Periscope needs to add is, like, when something starts to happen on a stream, it, you get a notification. Oh, something's happening in Colby's refrigerator. Oh, quick. Oh, I wonder what Colby got from the grocery store. He reached in and poured some juice. Wow. I think that, honestly, though, I think that people would be really into that. It's, it satisfies all of our creepy needs, like that stupid puddle story from last week. I don't yes. know if you... The UK crazy people, they can't even stand how much it rains in their country, so they have to have a big joke about puddles. Uh, Colby is looking like he has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> there was a Periscope stream of a puddle, and it was just watching people navigate, in many cases circumnavigate this puddle uh, to get to where they were going, and it was extremely popular. Gotcha. Not <laughs> as popular as Colby's Ridge, but... Oh, right, right, right. It's up there. Uh, yeah, if you want to have, like, the puddle, just put a camera in your refrigerator. 
gonna be it's gonna be great. I think is it, so. Is the refrigerator to Americans as puddles are to? to <laughs> it is pretty central to our daily lives. So right. and it's nothing more central to people in the UK than rain. So and a fridge is really just full of endless possibilities, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, Colby, what you can see, this is where you really sucker people, is you get it popular, and then you say, send me things to put in my fridge, and ah, see your thing in my fridge, and then you get all this free food. Yeah, someone will send you, like, one of those monkeys with the symbols, and it's just yeah. sitting in your refrigerator. Yeah, what's going on in Colby's <laughs> fridge? Party in Colby's <laughs> fridge. This is this is easily the best idea we've ever That's had. That's what I'll oh, call wow. my stream, too. Fridge party. Fridge party. <laughs> fridge party. Colby's fridge party. <laughs> I would subscribe the hell out of that. Um... I would be remiss if I didn't mention the the one remaining feature on the Samsung fridge, a shopping app um, created by MasterCard that lets you buy groceries right from your fridge. Um, and you can shop from multiple stores, and they will deliver to your home, um, etc. Great. Do we, have, do we have time for one more story? There's one more that I want to get in. You know, Dan, the beauty of it being our show is we always have time for one more story. Yeah, yeah. Like let's, talk? Talk, let's talk about... Uh, Apple killing the headphone jack. Ooh, controversial. Yeah. We've had two separate reports now from credible sources that Apple at least is considering removing the headphone jack on the next iPhone and instead replacing it with just the lightning uh, port. That's what you would use for your headphones. We saw at CES a number of companies announcing, maybe preemptively, headphones that use the lightning jack. They say you get a better uh, audio quality out of the lightning port. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm not an audio expert. I just go by what they tell me on the internet. Um, what, what do you think, Dan? It sounds like you're really... No, on the- I, I think that that is a total mystery to the situation, and I think that it's wireless headphones, and the, the lightning port isn't there for headphones. It's there for charging and nothing else. You could, if you needed to, backport your old analog uh, headphone jack headphones into the lightning port. You can do that, and that will be supported, but that is not what they'll ship in the box, and that is not what they'll show in the ads. So it's going to be the wireless headphones. Do you think if Apple did this, it would ship with wireless headphones? Yes, absolutely. No. No, I disagree. But they, need, they need the tap thing. And they need to make, they need to make head, wireless headphones easier to use, and they're not... Yeah. I think they're not going to be called Bluetooth headphones, Sean. I think it's going to be a whole new Apple-specific, maybe open, but a new standard for wireless audio where it's yes. not hold Bluetooth down the sucks. button, Bluetooth wait for the, the thing on your... Especially if they're going to be two distinct things that are actually two Bluetooth headphones you pair, that's going to mm-hmm. be a giant pain in the ass. No, hold down the button, wait till it blinks, any of that crap. It just works. It uses NFC. It uses Touch ID. It knows who you are. It pairs to your phone. It pairs to your iPad. It pairs to your MacBook, and and that's how it works. And anyone could make headphones like that. But Apple's going to come out with them first, and you're welcome to make them made for iPhone headphone. Get that certification. Do all that stuff like you normally would for the dock uh, paraphernalia. That's my prediction. Is that wow? Big prediction, Dan. Yeah. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying if Apple is to, say, remove the headphone jack, they basically have to come out, and I agree, with a pair of headphones that are nothing short of revolutionary. They cannot come out with just the standard earbuds with lightning at the end. Right, and I think people really want wireless headphones at work. You see people at the gym, they're futz around with these wireless headphones. They suck. And and they're all terrible. Yeah. No one, everyone eventually gives up on them. So, a, a, like, an Apple is the only company that could make this work. Mm-hmm. They could say, hey, listen up, here's a new standard. We're going to ship them with the iPhone. It works perfectly, just like Apple Pay, just like a bunch of other uh, Apple standards that they have. You don't have to worry about it. Handoff, iMessage, a bunch of the stuff that a lot of other companies can't really do, Apple does. And th- this is, like in their wheelhouse it's so it's 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 easy it would be it is like the easiest thing for apple to do to come up with a new hardware standard make it available and push it they're they're experts at that and i think that it would benefit everyone if they did that god damn it dan that's a great prediction <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna tweak it though i'm gonna tweak it okay, okay. i'm gonna take 90 percent of it but those revolutionary wireless headphones will not ship with your iphone they are an additional purchase and they will ship with uh, some kind of BS lightning ear pod 
nonsense. That's my prediction. They will do it, and they will upcharge you $100 for the privilege, and people will buy them. I can see that. Now, do do the new MacBooks have NFC in them? Uh, I don't know. No. Not that I know of. I'm just wondering if, because that's now in iPads and iPhones and the Apple Watch. I'm just curious if that's one way you could pair things. I mean, it's all radio, right? So, yeah. Right. You can do whatever you want. Uh, Apple can do, like, for example, pairing a, I bought, I got a new mouse at work the other day because my old, old, old one died. New Magic Mouse. Mm-hmm. The new Magic Mouse, it, they have, uh, they don't have batteries anymore. Here's the other thing, though. Uh, you turn it on, and th- suddenly it just, like, somehow it all just worked. There was no pairing step. You turn it on. I don't even, like, it just pops up on the screen. It's like, hey, it, 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 do you, are you pairing a Magic Mouse? I'm like, yeah. That's the what magic is. Right. I don't know how it did that. Maybe, like, a Bluetooth low energy component in the mouse. Mm-hmm. Maybe in addition to the long-range Bluetooth for the... But it's all it's all radios. We can we mm-hmm. can figure this shit Agreed. out. Can, yeah. Wow. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Look forward to that. Of course, we won't hear about that probably until next fall. So yeah. make, make sure you remember you made this prediction. But it is an interesting one. I should have put it for our end-of-year show last year. Oh, last year. We'll count Remember it. Remember last year? Whew. It's a long time I try ago. not to. Um, <laughs> Those were the days. Long <laughs> forgotten. Um, all right. Well, I'm, I'm glad we got to that last news story, but we are going to move on to our weekly picks, the part of the show where each oh, of us snap. comes to the table with something <laughs> to uh, chat about, something we want to share with the world. And Colby, because you're the only one with a pick in the document, you, <laughs> you get the grand privilege of going first. Each of us. Uh, so... This was this is a while ago. This I've had this pick sitting in my to pick list for for <laughs> weeks now, if not months, probably before Thanksgiving even. Uh, I don't know. It was about when I when I got the Apple TV. But in any case, one one night I was I was like perusing the Apple TV for stuff to watch. I was like messing around with apps, and I downloaded the PBS app. Uh, and I was looking through the shows, and and I saw this old house. And I remember, like, I don't know, like, my grandparents used to watch this old house all the time. I was like, huh, maybe I'll watch that. Uh, and I put it on, and then I stopped, like, eight episodes later. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's it's really, really, uh, like, fascinating and incredible. It's like HDTV without all the bullshit that HDTV does. <laughs> and instead of, like... Uh, I think the the closest show I can think of to it is like Property Brothers, where they like they go and like renovate a house for people, but like their whole renovation is squished into one episode. And this old house, like the season, is the whole renovation of the house, and they take you through like each like piece of it. And they they the 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 hosts are like actual like real ass contractors, and they do stuff. It's fascinating. They talk about how all the things work. Uh, it's very cool. It is very cool uh, and absolutely worth watching. And it is also, I think the PBS Apple TV app only has the most recent season on it. But if you go on their website, uh, you can watch every This Old House ever. There's also, there's a, literally an infinite number of This Old House episodes. Oh, it's, it's been, been on for 37 years or something. <laughs> Which is which is insane in and of itself. But are you gonna it, are you gonna so, binge it? I mean, I'm not gonna finish it. I watch I've watched back to like 2011 or something or 2010. Uh, like Jill and I started watching it together. Jill thinks it's great too. Uh, it's really it's for everyone. Anyone who's interested in like I don't know life. Skip the BS of HGTV and just watch this whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's really fantastic. Cool. Very yep. cool. Dan? Uh, you got something? Come on. <laughs> I mean, iRobot's a pretty good book. Uh, we we mm. talked about that. I don't know. Uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was trying to think the whole time that Colby was talking, and a little <laughs> bit at the start of the show. You, is this going to be the first time you go without a pick, Dan? We've done 116. Well, you could always go first, Sean, and give me a little bit of extra oh, time. Well, you're no fun. Jeez. 
You've had a whole hour. Uh, no, that's okay. I will go. You keep thinking. It's fine. Um, I actually have a pick and a preview, so I've got two. My pick is um, uh, something else to watch. We do that increasingly. Um, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't know if we picked it on this show before, but um, show your stupid face and go watch it. It's great. Um, it's one of my favorite comedies like of all time. And it's just, it's just so over the top and ridiculous, and these characters are so terrible. It's fantastic. Um, and the best part is there are ten seasons on Netflix right now. They just released season ten, and it is a rare show that, in my opinion, is just as funny in season ten as it was in season one. So um, I highly recommend if you've never seen it before, go and watch it, and you will fall in love with these characters because they're so good. Um, and that is on Netflix and uh, I think a few other platforms, but everyone has Netflix. Just go watch on Netflix. And Netflix. I also have a preview, gentlemen, and you don't even, you two don't even know about this, so get excited for this. Dan and Colby know this. Our listeners may not. This show has been increasingly filled with technical issues that are not only unfathomable, but are downright frustrating. Nothing ever fucking works <laughs> on this show. Today, the power button on my extra computer broke, so I couldn't even turn it on. Like, literally, the power button. I had to order a new power button. Do you, do you remember in college when the power button my, on my iPhone broke, so I just yes. never turned it off yeah. for a month? <laughs> and I had, like, a couple times the battery almost died, I had to, like, rush back to my room to plug it in. It's awful, and I swear, every time I boot the whole podcast rig up, because we're... You know, we're recording video and audio, and we're live on Mixler, and we're doing all this stuff. I'm sick of it. So, gentlemen, this is we're about to embark on a new journey, because Sean Jennings okay. is building a PC. Oh, my God. It's like, I finally did it. I've got about half the parts now. The other half are coming this week, and I'm hopefully building it this weekend. Maybe we'll get to see it next Monday. We'll see. This so. Get psyched, and I'm going to kind of keep track of what I do, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit on the show. Um, I was going to say you should record it. I'm, you I'm, can, oh, you can gonna, analyze your, your decision. It's going to be such a disaster, <laughs> such a spectacular disaster. Um, and hopefully it will go well, but I'm excited, and it should be fun. So you're definitely going to want to tune in next week to hear how this goes because um, not well. And who knows, maybe we'll be – if this works – as planned, we're going to be doing all kinds of cool, crazy stuff with this show. So, uh, so what, what that really means is next week, Sean will have built a computer, and over the subsequent, like, six weeks, he'll figure out how to get his drivers installed properly. No, <laughs> I hear that's what it's like to, to no. have Windows. Right? Honestly, Windows has made that much better. My concern is I'm going to get it. It's going to work perfectly on the first show, and then each subsequent show, it's going to break one thing after another. <laughs> oh, oh, the video doesn't work. Oh, the live doesn't work. Oh, the audio. And then by the end, it's just like a useless hunk of metal. Oh, yeah, so this means we get to play exciting video games with Sean now yes that's one of oh, the reasons wow. we did that so uh we'll get to do we'll have some yeah. oh okay i got my pick okay we'll see uh, all it took was a little inspiration uh I just... well you uh, okay so be, uh... okay yeah so <clears throat> i picked in the past a game called civilization five uh, but there is a standalone, it's standalone game in the same vein as Civilization V called Civilization Beyond Earth, which is the sci-fi civilization, the first time they've ever done this. Uh, and if you like Civilization games and you want something that has a couple new mechanics is pretty different, uh, Civilization Beyond Earth will, will scratch that itch for you. So in the relatively small amount of time I had in between when my PlayStation 4 broke and now that was not occupied by holiday uh, fun, uh, I did play Civilization V and a lot of Hearthstone. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that game's got me. It's got me. It's all in. I'm all in on the Hearthstone. But Civilization Beyond Earth, if you like, want to really churn away on something for a couple of hours, also really good. Nice. We'll check that out. We'll have links to that and all of the picks on our website, dontpanic.io. I had my, my first six-win arena game nice. last week on Hearthstone. Oh, Felt yeah. great. Nice. I've, fall, I've fallen behind. i got to catch up. You know what I learned is that when you're playing arena on Hearthstone, you know 
how you have like wins and losses, and then after three losses, you're out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're always playing someone who has the exact same record as you do, which I did not realize. So when you're at four and zero, you're playing someone else who's four and zero. It actually has a whole new dynamic to the mind game. It's like, oh well, like it's almost like imposter syndrome. You're thinking, well, this guy's four and zero. My deck's terrible. So he probably has a really good deck because I've only gotten lucky so far. Uh, but that's not that's not always true. But then there's yeah, there are some people who have just they start playing. You lose in like three minutes. You're like, well, okay. <laughs> They got insanely lucky. I was never going to win this game, anyways. Very, very cool. All right, um, that's it. We're done for the show. Let me tease a few things. Don't panic.io is our website. There, all the episodes, all the links, all the everything you ever needed to know about us, right there. Audio, video, our picks, and of course, where to subscribe and how to follow, all right on the website. Don't panic.io, and of course, at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. Uh, I also want to let the world know that you can catch myself, Colby, Dan, and Matt Mariani playing Dungeons & Dragons each week on our new podcast, Game Nights, uh, now separate. Um, It'll only be D&D all the time until we get bored with it at GameNights.tv. It's a new website. You can check it out. Um, It's still being built, so don't, you know, under construction. But it's there, so GameNights.tv and uh, at GameNightsTV on Twitter. So check those out as well. Um, we'll be back next week. We do this up uh, live on Mixler, M-I-X-L-R dot com slash Don't Panic Show. Thanks to our one live... Why don't we give it up for our one live listener tonight? I'm the only one giving it up. Nobody else is giving it up. I don't even know. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can no, hear you. What are we can... giving up for? We're giving it up Woo! for... Our... You're not even paying attention. Our one live listener, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sean, you're getting into the end of the know, show stuff where I don't out. talk, so yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. Well, now I know I'm going to sneak some things in uh, at the end of the shows when you're not listening. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Colby's a jerk. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to slip something in. Right. No, thanks to our live listeners. Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific uh, on Mixler. But we tweet about it as well, so I don't panic show and you'll, you'll get notified when we go live. That's it. We'll be back next Monday with more technology news on behalf of Dan and Colby. Uh, Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Don't Panic. Indeed.